back. My first guest tonight is an Emmy award-winning journalist who hosts Anderson Cooper 360 weeknights on CNN. Please welcome Anderson Cooper. See you. You look. Uh, you look fit. You look well. Well dressed. Well, thank you. Oh, uh, it's like you know, a menagerie back there. Like it's a freak a show. A guy or a badger walking around. Yeah, there's all kinds of backstage at our show. <laughs> it's never a pretty sight. It's a freak show, and I apologize. Uh, I have to ask you something because yeah. you come out on the show. You're you're always uh, perfectly dressed, perfectly attired. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of you lately covering these hurricanes. Right. Yeah. And that's a completely different. Sure. story when you cover one of these hurricanes and for all the journalists they send you guys to cover these hurricanes you're always standing there it's hard to look cool in that situation <laughs> they're telling you, stand there in the wind right. uh there are accidents incidents uh geraldo rivera had a hard time recently do you know what i'm talking I, I about i heard about it i heard about yeah it. we actually have let's take a look at geraldo having a little bit of an incident covering uh, hurricane ike and then we'll discuss uh, shaking hands with some of the firefighters as they walk through the area Geraldo, tell me a little bit about, uh, boy, you know, yeah. we're just watching that. Yeah. Tell us where you are and wait, what's going on? Well, we're on the seawall. Uh, look at this. I want you to show you something, Martha. Look at this. Oh. Whoa. Now. They're applauding. These were bad people. <laughs> Yay. Uh, but it is Geraldo. Um, <laughs> well, you know, that it, situation... It's, it's, tough, it's, it's tough, though, because you're out there for, like, you know, seven or eight hours or nine hours at a time, and essentially it's wind and it's water. Yes. little secret. So, basically, there's not that much to talk about because, I mean, how many things can you really say about wind and water? And, mm -hmm. and by, like, the seventh hour, you find yourself saying things like, remember four hours ago when I said it was windy? Well, <laughs> now it's really windy. <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing is you sometimes wonder, why do you have to be there? Do you know what I mean? Well, why can't I, they just put a camera there? I used to make fun of it, too, but before I started doing it. But it, 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 for people who have actually lived through hurricanes, it actually does, you know, it gives them information about what is happening outside their home. And it also, theoretically, it encourages people not to go outside because you do find a lot of people in advance of a storm kind of wanting to go outside and see for themselves what it's like. And it, even just this, uh, this last uh, week, uh, Hurricane Ike, um, Bef right before, you know, when the first kind of licks of the storm started, like, there were people out drinking, people, you know, they don't the take it seriously. Yeah, yeah. We had a guy, uh, I think you might have a clip of it. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll show this. Yeah. You had an incident yourself covering <laughs> <laughs> Ike, oh, yeah. which undercut uh, your, your... These are the kind of pe things you see right before Hurricane Ike. Okay, this is you covering Ike, and you don't know what's right. happening behind you. Right. Take a look. All right, Rick, we're going to continue to check in with you. Again, we are live throughout these next two hours, and Larry King takes it live, then we take it live for another hour. We have much more coverage of Hurricane Ike still coming up. There's a lot of people, if you can believe it or not, in Houston, a couple bars are still open. People are drinking, walking around. That's, That's right. Too. I love also... That um, looks like... He looks like he belongs backstage at our show. Well, I love how the car, like, screeches to a halt. Like, he's been cruising the neighborhood just like, looking for the opportunity. Yeah, well, he's, and, uh, uh, he's a comedic no genius. And told me there's a guy in a chicken suit behind me. Like, next I sent out a memo. I was like, next time, just let me know. Right. I'll, I'll talk to the chicken guy. That's fine with me. Right. But, you know, it's, it's better to know... Uh, there's a guy dancing behind you. It's in a also it costume. is undercutting your message of it's right, very exactly. dangerous out yes. here. Uh, people could get here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's not that dangerous. Uh, you um, you have quite a following uh, on television, on the web. People are, are fascinated with Anderson Cooper. There's there are now stories popping up on you about uh, on the web. I don't know if these stories are true mm. or not, but they take on a life of their own. There's this big web story now that that you can. Uh, what, tie like a four-leaf clover into a knot with your tongue? I, I, yeah, I heard that. They're like, what, heard what, that. what is that? Well, Who's it, coming up I, with this you stuff? You know, it's interesting. They're, they're, I, I, don't, I try not to read stuff on the web about me, but, I, like, friends of mine will, will email me, like, I heard what you did. It was really nice. And, and there, apparently there's some story going around recently that I, I was on a flight, and there was a pregnant woman in coach. Uh, I was in business class, and a pregnant woman in coach who was uncomfortable. And so I got up and gave her my seat, and I took her seat, and the entire airplane applauded. And I only wish that was true, but it's not now. Why are you telling people that's not true? <laughs> I would, I would love to have stories circulating I got a out there emails about like, me. That was so nice what you did on that flight. I was like, are you kidding? I, I, I didn't do that. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> that pregnant woman should find her own seat. I would happily give my seat to anyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no, I would think those are good stories to have out there. It's nice. Uh, at least yeah. the people are making up nice things about yes, you. It could yeah. be a lot worse. 
You were just in Denver, is that right, for the I was in Denver. Actually, Democratic Convention? I was, I was there for the Democratic Convention. Also, for, if Actually, I just found this in my pocket. This is for you. This is the confetti that was dropped at the Republican Convention. This is actual confetti? Look yes. at that. It's, it's actually, tiny. Uh, it's John McCain and Cindy McCain confetti. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's true. Put us in a locket and wear it around my neck. <laughs> Is that your grandchildren? No. <laughs> it's John McCain and his wife, Cindy. Uh, did um, yeah, a lot of Denver. people in Denver have trouble uh, because the, 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 the air, air is yeah. so thin? Uh, how did you handle well, that? Well, it was interesting. I, I, uh, you know, John Roberts, who anchors uh, American Morning for CNN, was sitting in the office, and I noticed he, was, he had a, a bottle of oxygen like that someone had dropped off uh, kind of as a joke at the office, but he was taking hits of oxygen. So I was like, you know, share the love. And uh, so I take a couple of hits of the oxygen. Uh -huh. And so we're sitting there literally in this office, like sucking on a giant, you know, tube of oxygen. And people are walking in and they're like, whoa, hey, sorry. I, uh, and we're like, no, it's just oxygen. It's just oxygen. They're like, yeah, no, hey, I'm whatever. Whatever, whatever, you, you, kids, whatever do. you kids are calling it. Yeah. It's like we're... we're Little uh, nitrous under, before the broadcast, yeah. It's like we're under a sink huffing Drano or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, that's your story. Now there's, gonna be a, <laughs> now there's a different story about you on the web. <laughs> that's right. Now, this campaign, let's talk about it, uh, because you actually know things. I mock and I tear down. You actually have a body of knowledge. Am I wrong? And I think I speak for everyone here. This campaign has been endless. Yeah, it's been long. It does feel like this is supposed to, there's a four-year term, and you do feel that the campaign should start up maybe about eight or nine months before the right. election. It's been like a We've been living with yeah. this for two and a half years. Yeah. I don't remember a time in my life when I was not covering this election, yeah. frankly. Um, yeah. There's footage of you announcing that Obama's joined the race and you're a little boy. <laughs> That's true. Well, it looks like Obama's in. <laughs> uh, that was in Denver. Um, but it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's great how interested people are in this race. I mean, it's, it's great to see an election where... Uh, you know, so many people are mobilized on, on both sides. It, it's interesting. I'm now getting, I get emails from friends of mine who have just gone completely insane. On one, you know, both uh, for Sarah Palin, against Sarah Palin, for John McCain, for for Barack Obama. But they send me these now emails, the kind I normally just get from crazed viewers. Um, I'm now getting them from my friends. So I've had to tell people, like, literally, I don't want to hear from you until the election's over because I really don't care about your opinion. To my friends, this is what I'm saying. And uh, but it, but everyone suddenly becomes like. It's like during the Olympics when everyone's an expert on diving and swimming. You know, yes. it's like, yeah. oh, man, that was a 9.89, you know, for the dive. Uh, and the guy in the deli this morning was, uh, like, took me aside. And he was like, I want to talk to you. I'm concerned about Obama's appeal to, you know, white working class Walmart moms in some regions in Indiana and Ohio. I'm like, uh, I just want a coffee. You know, just... <laughs> well, that's the other thing is I've had so many people start to tell me, no, don't worry. Let me tell you something. McCain, here's the thing. <laughs> in Michigan, if he gets those three right, voters, exactly. then this is going to... Yeah. And it's they like draw everyone, maps? It's like, like yeah. everyone is John King on the magic board now. Yeah, yeah. Has, uh, yeah. Why does everyone think that they actually... And everyone has this thing locked up in their head. They think that <laughs> they also, have yeah. the answer. But, it's, I mean, it is great that, uh, that everyone's so excited about it, and, and I think it's going to be a huge turnout. It's, it's, you know, it's without a doubt the most exciting election I've ever seen. It certainly is. Well, uh, please keep us posted. Come back. Tell us <laughs> well, what's going on. Because I have no idea. I won't get that word. I'm trapped. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm trapped in this world of crazy bumblebees in the audience and badger men and freaks. Uh -huh. <laughs> no one tells me any real news. Uh, Anderson Cooper 360 airs weeknights at 10 on CNN. Always nice hey, to pleasure. see you. Thanks a lot for being here. Anderson Cooper, we'll be right back. Willie Nelson. We'll see you in a sec.